In the Tao Te Ching, Laozi tells us that Tao is omnipresent. It has no form or sound, and it cannot be described in language or perceived through the five senses. So, what is Tao exactly? What important influences does it have on our lives? Why must human society follow the Tao, and how should we understand and cognize the Tao? What exactly is Tao? As we learned in the previous video, Tao is an abstract and hypothetical noun. It can represent all the concepts we want to know. If we want to know something, we can speculate using Tao to obtain predictive results. This is what makes the Tao Te Ching very flexible and mysterious. So, how does Laozi define Tao in the Tao Te Ching? In Chapter 25 of the Tao Te Ching, Laozi says, There was something undefined and complete, coming into existence before heaven and earth. How still it was and formless, standing alone and undergoing no change, reaching everywhere and in no danger of being exhausted. It may be regarded as the mother of all things. I do not know its name. And I give it the designation of the Tao, the way or course. Making an effort, further, to give it a name I call it the Great. Yu refers to a certain thing, that is, the Tao. It is Huncheng, meaning the Tao is vague and unclear, but it already exists. Its characteristic is that Xian Tian Di Sheng, implying it appeared even before the universe. In the chaos, the Tao existed, and when the universe came into being, the Tao began to exert its influence. Despite this, Laozi wants to describe for us what this Huncheng, Tao is like. So, he continues. Ji xi liao xi. The Ji means quiet, without sound. The Liao means without form, and you cannot see what it looks like. Du li er bu gai. It is independent of all things, yet it is unchanging and eternal, never departing from all things. Zhou xing er bu dai. It moves throughout the universe, never ceasing. It is the common mother of heaven and earth. Tao, even before the formation of heaven and earth, during the chaotic period, already existed. When heaven and earth formed, and everything evolved gradually, the Tao attached to all things, and it still existed, still the Tao. Laozi is honest, he says he only knows there is something like this, but no one has given it a name and he doesn't know what to call it because it originally had no name. So, he reluctantly names it Tao. Qiang wei zhi ming yue da. Here, ming means a descriptive term. Laozi uses da. Great, with reluctantly to describe it because it truly is immense. Here, Laozi tells us what Tao is, but with only these contents, it's still somewhat unclear. Upon reading the entire Tao Te Ching, we find that in Chapter 21, Laozi provides a preliminary description of Tao. He says, Dao zhi wei wu. Who can of Tao the nature tell? Wei huang wei hu. Our sight it flies, our touch as well. Hu xi huang xi. Eluding sight, eluding touch. Qi zhong you xiang. The forms of things all in a crouch. Huang xi hu xi. Eluding touch, eluding sight. Qi zhong you wu. There are their semblances, all right. This means that Tao is something hu huang, within which there seems to be the image of substance. The word hu huang become key here. Laozi defines them in chapter 14 of the Tao Te Ching. We look at it, and we do not see it, and we name it the equable. We listen to it, and we do not hear it, and we name it the inaudible. We try to grasp it, and do not get hold of it, and we name it the subtle. With these three qualities, it cannot be made the subject of description. And hence we blend them together and obtain the one. Its upper part is not bright. And its lower part is not obscure. Ceaseless in its action, it yet cannot be named. And then it again returns and becomes nothing. This is called the form of the formless, and the semblance of the invisible. This is called the fleeting and indeterminable. The following content is a bit challenging to grasp. 
If you've already watched my first video on the Tao Te Ching, it will help in understanding. For those who haven't watched it yet, you can click the link below the video to view it. When you look at it, no matter how you look, you cannot see its appearance. It is called Yi, meaning it has no color. When you listen attentively, after a long time, you cannot hear any sound. It is called Qi, meaning it has no sound. When you try to touch and feel it, you cannot touch it. It is called Wei, meaning it is formless. Colorless, soundless, formless, these three represent the emptiness of Tao. Tao is empty, and because of its emptiness, it can transform into everything visible, audible, and tangible. This is what makes it unique, and that's why Laozi says it is immense. We said Tao is Huncheng, and here, Laozi describes how the Huncheng happens. Tao is a blend of those things that are invisible, inaudible, and untouchable, forming a unity. So, honestly speaking, it's challenging to scrutinize what Tao truly is. The Qishang refers to Tao itself, and Jiao means luminous, Tao itself is not luminous. The Qixia refers to the embodiment of Tao, and Mei means dim. When Tao transforms into everything, those things become clear and visible. When it transforms into all things, they become specific, visible, audible, and tangible. The Shangxia together constitute the entirety of Tao. You say Tao is luminous, but it's not luminous. If it were truly luminous, you would be able to see it. You say it's dim, but it's not dim. When it manifests in entities, it is very bright because all entities are clear and visible. This is the Shi, the Yin Yang Zhi Wei Dao. The Yin and Yang are called Dao. Where there is something visible, there is something invisible. Where there is something audible, there is something inaudible. Where there is something tangible, there is something intangible. Dao is not luminous, but all things in the world are visible because of it. If there were no Dao, you wouldn't see anything. With Dao, everything is visible and you can distinguish clearly. Thus, Dao is neither luminous nor dim. The next line is even more mysterious. Sheng Sheng Bu Ke Ming, the Sheng Sheng means boundless, and Bu Ke Ming means indescribable. Fu Gui Yu Wu. Everything eventually returns to Tao, which has no specific form, and this state is called chaos. What is chaos? It's something you say it has, it has, you say it doesn't have, it doesn't. Tao is like this. You say anything, and it becomes that. You desire something, and it generates that. Without Tao, where would electric lights be? Without Tao, where would skyscrapers be? Without Tao, where would bridges be? This could go on endlessly. However, it is also the common destination of all things. You see, the skyscrapers eventually disappear, things eventually decay, people eventually die. Regardless of how precious something is, in the end, everything returns to nothing, back to the embrace of Tao. Tao gives birth to all things, and all things return to Tao. On the one hand, it looks like endless life, on the other hand, it looks like it slowly dies and returns to nothingness, creating a cyclic repetition, as explained in the principles of the Yijing. Yin Yang Zhi Wei Dao, the Yin and Yang are called Tao. The principles of the Yijing tell us that after adversity, prosperity will follow, and when things reach an extreme, they will naturally reverse. Everything follows a cyclic pattern. Laozi's Tao Te Ching further emphasizes that everything goes from non-existence to existence, and then back from existence to non-existence, this is the fundamental law of nature. If the Yijing is the source of Chinese philosophical thought, then Laozi's Tao Te Ching is the profound interpretation of the Yijing. So, what does Laozi want to tell us through this interpretation? Laozi, through this approach, wants to tell us why the world is the way it is, because it adheres to an unchanging law of the universe. We are a part of nature, and we must accept this constraint, live according to this trajectory, and follow this way of life. Then, we can live our lives peacefully and contentedly because we cannot exist without Tao. Now, how does Tao generate all things? In Chapter 42, Lao Tzu speaks a familiar passage. Dao sheng yi, yi sheng er, er sheng san, san sheng wan wu. The Tao produced one. One produced two. 
2 produced 3. 3 produced all things. Tao initially exists in a chaotic state, boundless and undifferentiated. However, this state can be broken. In the East, it's called opening heaven and earth, in the West, it's called the Big Bang. After the explosion, the chaotic state manifests into various forms of all things. We call this creation, evolution, and these are all facts. All things are born from Tao, yet Tao still exists. This is quite special because it is a crucial key in Lao Tzu's philosophy. Tao not only generates all things but is also the unalterable principle essential for the operation of all things. Therefore, in Chapter 34, Lao Tzu specifically states the following. All-pervading is the great Tao. It may be found on the left hand and on the right. All things depend on it for their production, which it gives to them, not one refusing obedience to it. When its work is accomplished, it does not claim the name of having done it. It clothes all things as with a garment and makes no assumption of being their lord. The Dao is pervasive and omnipresent. It can go anywhere, creating everything. The Qi Ke Zuo Yo means it can go to the left, it can go to the right, it has no bounds and reaches everywhere. All things are born relying on Dao, but the most crucial part is Arbu Zi. Dao does not say, I brought you into existence, so I want to control you, I want to intervene, and you must obey me. It does not have that intention. It allows things to be natural, to be what they are, because everything is within Tao. Even when success is achieved, Tao does not claim possession or credit. Tao does not act as the master of all things, does not dominate. All things follow their own Tao, and whether they have virtue is their own matter. In other words, Tao only provides the capital, offers opportunities, points out directions, and establishes some principles. But everything is free to act as it wishes. From this, we can see that Lao Tzu does not have the concept of domination. He doesn't say that Tao rules over someone or that the heavens rule over someone. He doesn't hold such views, and he doesn't advocate dogma either. Everything is laid out, you go your own way naturally. Therefore, we should earnestly find our own path in practice. Lao Tzu tells us through the Tao Te Ching that although Tao gives birth to all things and exists within them, it does not dominate anything. Because Tao is just the fundamental law of nature, whether one can comprehend this law is a matter of personal cultivation. Whether one chooses to follow this law is a personal choice. But how can we tell if we are following Tao? Now, boldly using modern language and a relatively straightforward approach, let's learn how to perceive Tao. Please advise. When facing any object, the first step is to remind oneself that everything is external. I came into this world with nothing, not even a piece of clothing, my body was given by my parents. So, one must realize that even our bodies are external. Then you move on to the second step, objectively understanding the true nature of the object. Only with this mindset can you remain calm and not be lured by desires, avoiding subjective attachments. In this state, the true nature of things is more likely to reveal itself. Because, generally, people are very subjective, viewing things through colored lenses, interpreting them according to their own ideas, which is incorrect. So, you must tell yourself, these are not my things, and approach them with calmness, objectivity, and impartiality. At this point, something called Xing appears, which is the energy of Tao, guiding us to understand the true nature of the object. In this way, you can reasonably face and deal with it. Thirdly, enjoy the process, don't fuss over the results. Why bother caring about the results? After you have dealt with something, you need to step back and remind yourself once again, originally, I had nothing, and I have no vested interests. If I gain, I gain, if I don't, I don't. What's given to me is given to me, what's given to others is given to others. Is it necessary to get angry? Is it necessary to argue? Is it necessary to use various means to vie and fight in secret? These are all unnecessary. When you can accept any result, you are in line with the state of mind we talk about, everything lies in the importance of the process. I have already enjoyed the process, so the results seem unimportant. 
Consider appreciating a beautiful piece of jewelry. Once you've admired it, you already have its value. As for where the jewelry ends up, why bother caring? If it truly stays with you, you might lose sleep over it at night, it might be more relaxing to leave it with someone else. This is why the most precious treasures ultimately aren't placed in anyone's home but end up in museums. By now, we have basically understood that Tao is the fundamental law of nature in the universe. This law goes from nothing to something, then from something back to nothing, cycling endlessly to infinity. Therefore, whether in our lives or in specific matters, what we should emphasize is the process, not the results. In addition, what else should we pay attention to in understanding Tao? As Lao Tzu teaches us, looking at it from the perspective of Tao, it nurtures all things. However, from the viewpoint of all things, we are all following Tao. This is called the unity of the two aspects. Tao is both a principle and a source of life. We must firmly remember this statement because if you only see one side and say, Tao creates everything, and after creating, it doesn't care, then all things can go their own ways, and the world will fall into chaos. We should be aware that Tao brings everything into existence, and it remains with all things. In other words, we often unconsciously follow Tao, and that's a good thing. Now, what is the law of Tao? It's not enough to say it's huhuang, chaotic. In challenging situations, Lao Tzu still strives to explain. According to Lao Tzu, the law of Tao is summarized in two lines in Chapter 40. Fan zhe dao zhi dong. The movement of the Tao by contraries proceeds. Ruo zhe dao zhi yong. And weakness marks the course of Tao's mighty deeds. Tao relies on movement. It doesn't rely on anything else. It's always in motion, and through this, it gives rise to all things. But what is its function? Its function is to be weak, not strong. Usually, people think the strong will prevail, but in reality, the soft and weak overcome the hard and strong. To make this clear, we will discuss why is it said, Fan zhe dao zhi dong. Thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss out on more exciting content in the future. If you have any questions, suggestions, or want to share your thoughts, please leave your comments in the section below. I look forward to hearing from you.